and uh, it's recognized by the VA. And again, there are diseases that that the VA now allows people to get rated for them because they're presumed to have come from uh, uh, exposure to problems over there in that part of the world. What other legislative issues uh, would you like to talk about, uh, Glenn, that we need to tell our uh, uh, listeners about? We're looking at an update that I've got here from my organization now. Uh, this is the latest bulletin that they put out. I'll take a look at this one first. Uh, there are some In your organization, you mean the DAV? The DAV. Okay. There are a number of bills that have been introduced in the House and the Congress, such as health care for veterans exposed to chemical hazards. Uh, and that's called Health Care for Veterans Exposed to Chemical Hazards Act of 2009. Then we also have bills that have been introduced in both the House and the Senate for Rural Veterans Health Care Improvement Act to try to take care of those veterans that are out in rural areas. Also, we have bills in the House and the Senate that would cover Rural American Indian Veterans Health Care Improvements. That's called the Rural American Veterans Health Care Improvement Act of 2009. Now, if I understand on that, on the Rural Veterans, what they're planning on doing, I believe, is to have these uh, health, uh, mobile health centers uh, going out to these uh, rural areas and actually uh, uh, doing some uh, visits, uh, similar to the DAV that has their mobile van that, that, that comes around. It, is, that, is that correct, Glenn, do you know? Under that, uh, under that Rural American Indian Veterans Health Care Improvement Act, VA would be uh, required to assign an Indian Veterans Health Care Coordinator for each of the uh, 10 VA facilities that serve communities with the greatest per capita number of Indian veterans. VA would enter into a memorandum of understanding with the Secretary of the Interior to ensure the uh, electronic transfer of health care uh, records of Indian veterans between uh, Indian health care and VA facilities and that type of thing, M giving them more, more access is what this would do. I also understand that in some instances the VA are, is, is actually going out and, uh, and visiting with, with veterans who, uh, because of distance and, and, and uh, other disabilities, are unable on a regular basis to come to a VA uh, facility. There was an advertisement not long ago on, on TV in which this uh, uh, employee of the VA was actually going out to a, a veteran's home delivering uh, home care. One thing, the, one thing the DAV does is whenever we're going to have the mobile service van, and then normally it's on the parking lot at the Chapter 7 here at, in, in Bowie, uh, they sent letters out to the veterans and the immediate area and um, of course the van they normally have about six or seven stops on that and there's so if a person c lives like in Fort Washington can't make it that day they can drive up to Bowie or they uh. go over to the Harley Davidson there in Laurel which is another spot mm -hmm. and there's a couple other spots that they have but the, the thing is that there's a lot of times some of these things fall through the cracks so I think we may try to do is get the the Bowie Blade News or the uh, the Bowie Star that may be on the front page say veterans, you know, the, the mobile service van is going to be on the parking lot because you don't need an appointment to come over there. Mm -hmm. And they're normally there from 10 to 4. Mm -hmm. And um, the last time I, I stopped by, they saw 30 veterans. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of spouses that are coming now because they, they want to see what they benefits they have because they're, they're Spouses have died. I know just one that her husband was injured very bad in Vietnam. He recently died, mm -hmm. and they would they really helped her out on this this service. This is a really good service that they have. Mm -hmm. What other legislation do we have there, Glenn? Uh, 
How about the slot machines for the nonprofits? Well, you know, they were introduced in the state last year and they were turned down. Right. So we've got to get with our senators and our delegates and say, hey, we want to do that again. We would like for you to introduce that bill. I think your local senator Peters was uh, was one of right. the uh, people that would really supported us in, in introducing those bills. There are a number right. of bills here that he introduced right. at our, that would uh, help veterans. At yes. our DAV convention, uh, we uh, honored Doug Peters, Senator Peters, as uh, one of the most outstanding legislators in the in the Senate for veterans legislation, and then Mary Delaney James from up uh, in Cecil County, uh, and she said she was going to pick up the banner to just try to get the not a new law, just get the Eastern Shore law extended to the Western Shore. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're discriminating against the nonprofits over here, mm -hmm. and they do so much good. Absolutely. And, and it's and there again, it's and not in any competition with the state, right? Because these are closed clubs. They're for the they're for the veterans mm -hmm. and and their auxiliaries and their immediate guests. It's mm -hmm. not an open door policy. And I can tell you that the DAV. If you're not a veteran, you can't come into the DAV and, right. and get served. Right. And um, so this is something we really have to push because this, uh, you know, the, the it's getting very difficult to keep these doors open. And this would be one one help for the club and 50% of the profits of these go back to the community. Right. They have a list and the sheriff's department does is who's in, in control of the, on the Eastern shore. And I'm sure that would happen over here mm -hmm. to make sure that everything is run by the book mm -hmm. and it's good. And they've had it over there 25 years now mm -hmm. and there's no problems. So right. I don't see why they just can't bring it on this side. Mm -hmm. Well, another area that I, that I frequently run into a problem with is, uh, you know, while we, were in the, while we were in the military, well, of course, we didn't pay for our retirement, but after we got out, if we wanted to give our survivors at our death a part of, a part of our pension, not really a part of our pension, but survivors benefit, and we had to pay for that. So any veteran that comes out from the military, they will sign up for survivor's benefit, for the survivor's benefit program. They don't have to do that. Some will not sign up, others will. If a person does not sign up for the survivor's benefit plan, at the death of that veteran, the spouse will not receive anything. Everything stops. Those that have signed up, we are now getting an offset. There's a problem with that right now. And we, we have brought this to the attention of the Congress. There's two bills that are, there's a bill in the House, bill in the Senate, to try to do something about that. What I'm saying here is that if you pay so much money, you expect to get something back for the survivor's benefit. But then comes, if a veteran dies from a service-connected disability, that veteran dies from a service-connected disability, that veteran may, the spouse, may, the surviving spouse, may be eligible to receive what we call dependent indemnity compensation. If that spouse is approved by the VA and, and is awarded dependent indemnity compensation, and the veteran, the deceased veteran paid for survivor's benefit, then the DIC is offset from the SBP, meaning that that spouse is not getting the full amount of SBP that they thought they were going to get. And for a number of years, the, our legislators have been trying to get a bill passed to give us the SBP and the DIC. So we'll have to see what happens to those bills in the Congress this year. There seems to be a lot of that type of legislation. It goes with retirees who have some sort of a disability compensation because the retired pay is, is offset by right. disability pay. You're paying for your own. Uh, for those that aren't at least 50% or more disabled. And mm -hmm. so there's an offset there. So there seems to be a lot of these offsets 
that uh, are in veteran legislation. Now, yeah. one thing that uh, Glenn was talking about survivors' benefits, and when we went, when I went, when I retired, uh, we, my wife and I both went to this uh, very elaborate seminar that the Navy Department put on for Navy and Marines. And if my wife would have predeceased me, mm -hmm. the money I put into that plan was gone. Mm -hmm. There was nothing, I would get nothing back. And if you remarried, it didn't make any difference. It was for that person. And say that I paid for 20 years and she died, that money well, I put in for 20 years is gone. Uh, one, thing no I, one thing I would like to add, if, if uh, you would use an example of yourself, if your wife predeceased you, uh, and uh, I mean, if you pre uh, predeceased your wife, then she would get she the would SVP. She would get that, right. But uh, if she died first, right. then... Nothing. You lose nothing. everything. However, right. now, if you decided to get married again, then you could resume. You got one year. Well, not when I did. To resume. You, maybe, maybe they have a good, I yeah, retired you, 32 years you, ago. Yeah, you can do that now. Right. You, okay. can, uh, you can resume payments if you get married again. Okay. But you only got one year. A lot of veterans that miss that year uh, after they're married, then they can't sign up again. They're out. Now, there's a lot of uh, veteran legislation out there. And I assume the major veterans organizations support uh, this legislation that's, that's moving through. And I noticed you brought uh, a booklet with you. Can you tell us a little bit about that, Glenn? This is what we call the independent budget for the Department of Veterans Affairs. This budget, this independent budget is put together by four veterans organizations. It's put together by the AMBETS, Disabled American Veterans, Paralyzed Veterans of America, and the Veterans of Foreign War. They put this together and they sign it. And what they do, they, it is a budget that they put together to say, this is what we need. For example, here's a chart right here that says, uh, it shows what we see as the VA budget should be for FY 2011. It shows what's actually appropriated for that year. And we are normally just a little bit higher than the actual appropriation. This is a book that is also distributed to all of our congressmen and they can uh, Congress people, and then they can see just what we see as the needs to take care of veterans, the needs are. So that's, uh, that's a booklet by all of our major organizations that's given to Congress to let them know what, what we're desiring. For of our major organizations. For, for the organizations. Well, Glenn, it's, it's hard to believe, but our 30 minutes are up. Uh, we want to thank you for joining us on Veterans Forum. And we especially want to thank you for watching Veterans Forum. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the program and learned information useful to you and your family. Now we ask you to get involved with your local veterans organizations. Uh, we need your support and we need your help. Come and find out more about your benefits that you're eligible for. And uh, we ask you to stop by at the DAV of the American Legion and uh, see your uh, local comrades. We also want to thank Tom Allen, who is our director tonight and uh, cameraman. And again, thank you again for watching Veterans Forum.